hi welcome back to my channel and welcome to a, another review video i haven't done a review video in a, a little while today i am reviewing something super exciting it's actually kind of like an unboxing video too because i haven't used this product before and i yeah i'm just really excited by it i'm intrigued to see what i can make with it so i'm going to be testing this foil quill pen so this is a heat pen that means that i can write in foil which is so cool so the pen has a usb port so you can plug it into like a plug socket or i've got a battery pack next to me and it heats up the pen so the nib gets quite hot and then there's some foil with it and i can foil on things on the back there's like your normal prints that you can foil on, but then there's 3D objects, which I obviously can't foil on in my traditional foiling method because that involves going through a printer. So there's things like a plant pot and a globe. So I'm really excited to see what I can foil with this. I think that's just gonna be so much fun. So let's give this a go and see what it's like. So like I said already, it comes with a heat pen. So this is a freehand heat pen. I think Foil Quill also do a pen that goes in the Cricut or the Silhouette as well. But you can't use this specific one in a cutting machine. This is just freehand. And then it does come with some foil too. It looks like it comes with quite a bit of foil actually. So this foil is heat reactive foil. The foil I normally use is toner reactive foil. So if you are using this pen, it's a good idea to make sure you get the right kind of foil. I am just going to unpackage this now. So that's the pen, and then we've got some foil here. Let's just have a little look at how long it needs to heat up for. Allows to heat up for five minutes. I probably should have done that earlier. Okay, I've just got a battery pack here, and I'm going to use that to heat it up. Plug that in, and then I guess it's just on. So there's a light up here to show me that it is on. Feels really nice to hold. I like that this is nice and chunky. I wonder if I'm gonna have to write quite upright to get that whole nib down, or whether I can write more to the side. I think I'm gonna have to write quite upright, which would be interesting, because I'm not used to writing like that. So let's just let that heat up for a little while. Now we've got a roll of foil here. I don't want to use too much at a time, so what I'm going to do is cut it down and then I'm going to stick it down washi tape. That's what I've seen a lot of people do in their videos, just so it doesn't move around at all. So I've got some black card in front of me. I thought I'd try it out on some black card first. And then I've got this little gift box. So this is something I wouldn't normally be able to foil on. I could, of course, hand write on it in some sort of gold pen. I'm intrigued to see how it works on something like this. I then also got this giant wooden peg. I'm intrigued to see how it works on wood. That could open up so many more products for me, especially for Christmas time, when it comes to doing Christmas decorations. So that would be really exciting. I'm also gonna try it with some of my mink toner reactive foil because I've got so much of this foil already and I don't really wanna have to buy different foil. So if I can use it with the tone reactive foil, then that would be amazing. So it's been five minutes since I turned this on, but oh, that's warm. That's really warm. I can feel it down here, actually. There is no indication to say whether it's ready or not, though. I thought this light might change a different color or it might flash. This is really warm. I'm guessing that must be boiling hot. So I would not say this is for kids whatsoever. Okay, let's do this. I'm really excited. Oh, I don't think I've stuck this down enough. I'll just have to hold it. It seems to be working with me having it at a slight angle, which is good. I'll test it with it more upright too and see if there's much of a difference. So that's Millie there. Let's do it more upright and see if that makes any difference. 
And then I also want to try out faux calligraphy. I'm just intrigued to see what it's like if you keep going over the same area. So I'm just going to go H and then go back in. It's quite good that I can pretty much see where I'm writing. I do have to kind of sit at a weird angle just because of the light. It's a little bit hard with faux calligraphy just to see where you've gone back over and if the transition is smooth or not. That looks pretty good. It's really easy to write with. It's a lot easier than I thought. I thought it'd get caught a little bit. I definitely didn't stick it down enough here, but I was able to hold on, so that is fine. Let's unstick it and see what this is like. Oh, so it's not done it as solidly as I hoped. I wonder if I need to press harder. But that does look really pretty. Yeah, so these don't look as solid. And up here it's not as solid either. I'm going to give it a good, another go a sec with the same gold foil. I'm just going to press really hard and see if that helps at all. So I'm just going to do it down here. And we'll just do an M. I didn't press too hard before. No, so I pressed quite hard there. And I don't know if you can tell, but it looks quite textured. If I just show you up close, can you see there's quite a lot of text going on? And I wonder if it's because it's the card. So similar to when you do tone reactive foil, you have to have it super smooth. I'm gonna give it a go with this foil. And then I'm gonna try and use a really super smooth card and see if that makes any sort of difference. So on this one, I've actually stuck all the way around and hopefully it won't move too much. Maybe I just need to go slower. If I go really slow, maybe that just gives it a bit more of a chance to heat up. Oh wow, that's worked much better. So I wonder if I just need to go a little bit slower. I wonder if I sped up too much. So it's not very crisp, but actually I really like that. That looks so pretty. It looks so nice. And it doesn't feel too embossed either. It feels like it's part of the card, which is really lovely. I think that's so pretty. I'm gonna give it another quick go on this black with the gold and just go a little bit slower and see if that helps. So I've just put a little bit more of the heat reactive foil that came with this foil quill and I'm going to go a lot slower this time and see if that works. Yeah, that's not working as well. That's so weird. You would have thought the foil that came with the pen would work really well, but it just doesn't seem to want to work at all. How strange. So what I'm gonna do is try this gold foil on some super smooth card, and then if that still doesn't work, I am gonna use the toner reactive foil for the box and the peg that I have. Okay, so this is the super smooth card that I use for my foiling, so for my toner reactive foiling. And let's see how this heat reactive foil works on here. That's still quite patchy. So for some reason, the heat reactive foil that comes with the quill pen just doesn't want to work. So yeah, it looks quite patchy. I'm just going to get some gold foil that's toner reactive and just double check if that works and it wasn't a fluke the last time. So this is some mink toner reactive foil instead. That has worked so much better. So if I just hold it up to the light, can you see it looks a lot more solid? It's not as smooth around the edge, but I quite like that handmade look. Whereas this one up here is super patchy. 
So what I'm going to do for the rest of the test is just use this mink toner reactive foil because it's just working so much better. This is not working at all. So it's good that it only comes with a little roll and not a huge roll. I really love writing with this though. It's so easy and smooth to use. Let's have a go on some other objects. So I've just taken down the toner reactive foil and as this is gift box, let's write for you. And now for the moment of truth. So this does feel a little bit textured, this lid. So I'm intrigued to see how it comes out. Oh, wow, that looks so pretty. I actually love this. Oh my God, that's so pretty. I think I'm obsessed. That is so beautiful. I absolutely love it. Wow. Sorry, I just totally got lost in the foil there. That is just so nice. And it looks a lot smoother actually. On here, it does feel a little bit indented. So I think that's just because of the thickness of the card and the pressure that I put on. I am obsessed and I love it. And that looks so nice. Okay, let's try the wood and see if this works. I think this is gonna be quite tricky to write with because it's quite high up, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so it doesn't feel as smooth to write with. I wonder if you could do wood burning with this pen as well. So that definitely felt a little trickier to use on the wood. I think partly because of it being quite high up, but it felt like it caught a little bit as well. <gasps> That's worked so well. That looks so pretty. And it's really solid. It is a little bit jaggly, jaggly, jaggedy on some of the corners. I think just because of the wood grain. But that looks so pretty. Oh my god, I love this. This is amazing. So the pen I got, I think there's a couple of different sizes. So this one, I think it's the medium size. When I was looking to buy online, it had different sizes, but I can't seem to see that anywhere on the packaging. Ah, yeah. So on the packet here, it says standard tip. So there was a fine tip and a bold tip. I quite like the standard tip. I think that's a nice thickness actually. I think the fine tip probably be amazing for like really fine detail. You have to actually buy a whole new pen though. It's not just the nib, which is a bit of a shame because that means you have to have three pens if you want to do lots of different thicknesses of lines. I can't remember how much this cost me. Let's have a little look quickly. Yeah, so it's just under 30 pounds. So that's quite a lot if you wanted to get all of the quills. I've just seen actually, so there's a standard tip, a fine tip, and then there's a calligraphy tip. So it's like a chisel tip. I don't really do calligraphy with a chisel tip. Oh, and there's also a bold tip as well. I don't normally do calligraphy with a chisel tip, it's just not the style I use, but if you did want to do some thick and thin lines, then that's probably the better option, because this was a little bit tricky to use for faux calligraphy, just because it was hard to see where you'd gone over. But for monoline lettering and calligraphy, this is great. I just had a thought, I have a book here that's like faux, faux leather, and I wanna give it a go on this book, because if I can do that, then I could totally start foiling books. That would be so cool if I could do foiled books. Okay, let's give this a go. So the texture feels really weird and bumpy. 
I think I pressed too hard. I think I'm going to go a bit lighter for these other letters. Yeah, so I pressed way too hard at the beginning here and it didn't like the texture of the book. So I don't know if you can see, it's kind of melted the book in a way. But when I went on and didn't press as hard, it did get a little bit better. It's not as clean as some of the other things. I think it just might be the texture of this book. But I guess if I found book covers that had super smooth surfaces, then I could start doing people's names on book covers. That would be so cool. Oh my God. I am in love. That was so much fun. I've made a right mess on my desk. There's foil and tape and things everywhere. But I had so much fun using this pen. Less excited by, ooh, by the foil that came with it. It just didn't seem to work as well. But thankfully I have a bunch of toner reactive foil, so I'm not too worried about that. But this pen just works so well. I think you do need to be careful depending on what surface you write on. So I guess with a little bit of experimentation, you just get used to that. But I am just so excited to start using this on everything. Like, I just want to foil everything now. Ooh, I wonder if it could work on glass. That would be really cool if it could. Maybe that's an experiment for another time. I hope you found this video helpful if you've been thinking about getting one of these. Like I said, you can also get an adaption that's like this for a Cricut or a Silhouette machine. I don't have either of those machines at the moment, uh, but I assume it probably works in a really similar way. So you probably won't be able to do lots of thick lines over the top, but if you just want to do really lovely mono line art, that would work really well. That would be so cool. The wire that attached with it is quite long, so it didn't feel like it got in the way at all when I was writing. And I guess you can use it for left-handed people as well. So that's a massive bonus. It's not just for right-handed people. It would be good to have like some sort of light up here just to say, yes, it is ready, it's heated up, but you can feel a bit of the heat down here in the barrel. I can't wait to carry on playing with this. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you found it helpful. And if you were thinking about getting this pen, I get this pen. It's a lot of fun. It's really fun to write with. I would get your hands on some toner reactive foil as well if you don't have toner reactive foil. So I just use mink toner reactive foil. I'll leave it in the description below so you can get your hands on that too. A large roll costs like eight quid, so it's not too expensive. If you enjoyed watching this video, then make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you are loving my videos or you're new here, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. It will help me massively. I hope you are well, and I will see you next time for a, another video. Bye. I just touched the nib of the pen with my finger and it really hurt. So yeah, if you're gonna put your hand near it, then be careful what you're doing because I just leant on it basically and that really hurt.